Okay, this lecture is going to cover the integumentary system, which is your skin and all of its functions and structures. <coughs> okay, so of the major functions of the skin, one of the biggest functions is protection. Right? Your skin covers your entire body, so it's covering all of your internal structures and protecting it from all sorts of external environmental factors like germs, dirt, whatever the case may be. Um, one of the other major functions is the synthesis of vitamin D. As your skin is exposed to UV light, such as sunlight, your skin produces vitamin D. That vitamin D in turn goes through the liver and kidney, gets changed into something called calcitrol, and that's what regulates calcium and phosph phosphorus excuse me, production in your body. Continuing on with major functions, another one is sensory reception. Right, you have a variety of nerves and nerve tissue running through your skin and they receive different messages from the external environment such as touch, taste, pressure, pain, temperature, you name it. Um, and so that's another major function. And then finally temperature regulation. Um, you have sweat glands located within your skin and so as your body temperature increases from activity or just external temperature you start to sweat. The sweat glands produce the sweat and the liquid on your body starts to evaporate and it causes this thing called evaporative cooling to occur. So as moisture evaporates from a surface, the temperature of that surface decreases evaporative cooling. So it does help regulate your overall body temperature. Now there are three major layers to your skin, the epidermis, which is the top layer, the dermis, the middle layer, and the subcutaneous, which is the lower layer. Now starting with the epidermis, again this is your top layer, epi meaning on top of, and derm meaning skin, right, so your epidermis is that top layer of your skin. It's a very thin layer, and it itself is divided into two more layers. Um, these are referred to as strata. So the first layer, the stratum germinativum, right, is superior to the dermis, which means this is the layer that actually sits on the dermis. Right? Your stratum corneum is the layer that's the top of the epidermis. And so if you think about it, when you're looking at your epidermis, if you look at your hand right now, the layer of the epidermis you're seeing is the stratum corneum. The stratum germinativum is underneath that. Right, the stratum germinativum produces cells that in turn make up the epidermis and the stratum corneum is a really tough layer, right? It's the top. So you can imagine it's got to be a little tougher. Um, it's going to help keep water inside your body, right? You don't want to lose too much water. Now, sweating's a different thing, but overall you want to keep water in your body. Now the next layer or the middle layer of your skin is your dermis. Right, so it's in between the epidermis and the subcutaneous level. And this is the layer of your skin that contains the elastic fibers, right? It gives your skin that flexibility. So when you bend your arm, right, your skin kind of stretches out over your elbow. If you didn't have these elastic fibers in the dermis, you wouldn't be able to make that movement. Your skin wouldn't be able to stretch. Right? It's also in the dermis where the sensory nerves are located. Right? And so that's where you're going to find um, all the nerves that are going to detect the feelings of touch, temperature, pain, pressure, that stuff we mentioned before. Okay, the final layer of your skin, or that very bottom layer, is the subcutaneous layer. And this is the fatty layer. It's what contains all the fatty tissue. I'm going to give you a second to think of that me from medical terminology. What was that root that meant fat or fatty? I'm hoping all of you guys came up with ADIP, ADIP, right? So another term for fatty tissue would be adipose tissue. Make a mental note of that. You are going to need to know that ADIP means fatty and that adipose tissue is fatty tissue. All right, and the function of this fatty tissue um, has a variety of them. Energy storage, insulation, protection, right? But uh, having too much adipose tissue in your subcutaneous level can result in obesity. Not to say you don't want any. Some is good. Too much can be bad for your health. 
Aside from the three major layers of the skin, there are other parts to your integumentary system. Your hair and fingernails and toenails are all considered part of the integumentary system. Of course, your hair comes from follicles found within the dermis. And there are smooth muscles attached to the hair root. So if anybody in here has ever had chill bumps, things like that, where the hair on your arms or leg kind of stands straight up on end, that's the result of that muscle right, contracting and doing things. Of course, your fingernails and toenails also part of it. And they grow from a nail root that's found within the skin. Right, the part of the nail that you can see is the nail body, and it's that cuticle, right, that base of your fingernail or toenail that covers the actual nail root. There are also two major glands found within your skin. And we already mentioned sweat glands before when we were talking about the function of the integumentary system um, in terms of temperature regulation. Right, your body gets hot, the sweat glands start to produce sweat, the sweat forms on the surface of your skin and then evaporates, causing cooling, right? That process I mentioned before, evaporative cooling. You also have sebaceous glands. Usually these are associated with hair follicles, and of course you've got hair all over your body. Um, most people notice sebaceous glands on the face, like the nose, chin, forehead, things like that. Um, and their overall function is for waterproofing, right? To kind of try to keep all the moisture inside your body if possible. The majority of your body is water. And you need a lot of water for cells to pro pro properly function. Right? So it is an important thing, but it can backfire, right? Clogging of sebaceous glands is what results in acne and things. Right? So as the sebaceous glands get clogged up with various things, bacteria, whatever the case may be, that's what in turn forms the pimple, right? So it results in acne. That's why I say we're most familiar with it on our face. So that's really it for the integumentary system. Those are the major functions and major structures that it